This offense didn't convert a single third and 11 this year. This offense was a good play action pass offense. They barely did it. So I understand like people's feelings are hurt about this. This is a production based business that you, there's no way you watch this season. And there's no way you watched that game on Monday night and didn't think, my goodness, we got to rip it all the way down because it's mm. a colossal disaster offensively. This was necessary in Tampa. Whether people want to admit it or not, it was needed. I, I don't think it was needed. I don't think it was necessary, Dan. And I do believe that my feelings are hurt in this situation, and here's why. I've been close to the situation in Tampa because I played there. This is a repeat offender situation in Tampa. Ultimatums being given to coaches all the way back to Coach Tony Dungy as far as Lovey Smith. And now we're looking at it and we're seeing Ty Bowles. That's what it smells like to me because you mentioned 2020, no creativity. They went on to win a Super Bowl. They were healthy. Then last year, when they got healthy, they looked really good. This year, it was a broken down football team. They didn't have... Leonard Fournette was not the same guy. Evans in and out of the lineup. Godwin in and out of the lineup. No Gronkowski. The defense is in shambles. But yet and still, I know the ownership group down there, and this is not far from them to give coaches ultimatums, and I'm disappointed in Ty Bowles, and I know you want to certainly say, and everybody wants to say, well, what is he supposed to do? Certain times in certain situations, you're supposed to step on the table for your assistant coaches. Now, if there's something going on in between Todd and Byron in particular, I don't know. But I know coaches that I've been around will step on the table for their coaches and take the bullet for them, and I don't see that's the case with Ty Bowles. So, yeah, I am a little disappointed. A little bit. The, the lack of connection. There, there, there's no connection between what the, this offense does, run game and pass game. The reality is this. I understand that there was a depletion of talent because of injuries. I'm watching the New York Giants play on Saturday night. Don't talk to me about how talented they are on offense. Their coaches have been complete difference makers. And in Tampa offensively, that wasn't the case. That's the truth. Well, both, 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 both of y'all feelings can be taken in, uh, into account. And I lean more towards UDO because I don't know the people in Tampa. All I know is what I watched was a terrible offense this year. Terrible. Now, there are reasons for that. But I also saw Absolutely things reasons. that, that could have tried to help them not be who they were offensively, and nothing ever changed from week in to week out. And I think that's what we look at as the outside looking in. Like, what are you actually doing with all of these mishaps that's happening around you to elevate the level of offense? And it seemed like it was the same old thing every single week. Yep. Yeah, let me just say this too, guys. Over the last two seasons, the Bucks have used play action at the lowest rate in the NFL. Over that same span, Tom Brady has the league's highest QBR on play action. So it's like, here's on a silver platter. Here's how you can fix it. And that still didn't happen. I know there's a lot of context there, but still worth pointing out. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.